Bowling is a sport for everyone. Young and old, anyone, anywhere can participate in this sport. From the beginners to the best in the world. Bowling brings joy to all who compete. Today, we wrap up National Bowling Day. You're watching the best women bowlers in the world compete for the Pepsi PWBA Louisville Open next. National Bowling Day was first observed in 1956. Since then, every second Saturday in August, the sport takes center stage. And today, from Executive Strike and Spare, it's the 2019 Pepsi PWBA Louisville Open Championship Round. Five of the world's best bowlers set to compete for a tour title. This is Dave Ryan along with my tour star broadcast partners, Hall of Famer Kelly Kewitt and Player of the Year front runner Shannon O'Keefe. We have stepladder bowling here today. We start play with a five seed, two-time major champ, Maria Jose Rodriguez taking on Missy Parkin, looking for her second career title. The winner takes on a number three seed from Germany. Birgit Perpler making her second straight TV appearance. The second seed, Dasha Kovalo of Ukraine, the 2019 Queens champ, and our top seed legend, Liz Johnson, the Hall of Famer and 24-time titleist, looks for her first win of the Year. She's joined now by the reigning tour player of the year, Shannon O'Keefe. Liz, last week was a bit rough. How did you bounce back this week to lead wire to wire? Um, I just really worked hard uh, this past week on my game, uh, just really working on my leverage. And I had I've had a lot of leg problems, so that seems to be feeling really good. And I feel 100% this week, and uh, that definitely helped me throughout the week. So today, if you win, it's title number 25. What's it going to take to capture that milestone today? I got about 10 great frames. Uh, you know, I, I led this week, which is awesome, but um, I still have a game to go, and I'm just going to do the best I can and try to bowl as solid as I possibly can. Thanks, Liz. Back to you guys. Chad, thanks so much. Some bowling greatness there, Kelly. The last four player of the year awards. As we look now to the future for the sport. Oil pattern today. Yeah, they have 44 feet, medium volume. Just look where the dark blue is on the screen. That's where majority of the oil is. But look right here between the arrows, 13 to 13, almost half of the volume in the middle part of the lane. The ladies started to play around 15. Keep going left, and with only five bowlers on the TV pair, you might see them get into 2022 as they migrate left the entire time. But with four people on a pair, they got tricky. Interesting scores to come. High scoring tonight on the show. Let's see what happens. All right, Kelly, looking for some big numbers here in Louisville. And here we go. It's time to bowl. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome our number five seed from Colombia, Maria Jose Rodriguez. Second straight TV appearance for the star from Colombia, who now lives in Austin, Texas. She beat Diana Zaviavla last week. First match, 212-193, before losing to Jordan Richard in East Hartford. And her show starts with all 10 back. Big smile on her face. Look at that. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome our number four seed from Laguna Hills, California, Missy Parkin. Quest for title number two. This is career. Starts with a strike. Longtime member of Team USA from Southern California. Alum of Cal State Fullerton. In her third telecast this year. Caught her on Bowl TV early in the year in Roanoke Park as well as Fountain Valley. Now here on live TV tonight. Looking for her second career title, like you said, Dave. That's been a finalist this year, but not a champion. And she told us today she was so excited to be back on national TV. What an opportunity. Looks for two straight. And has two straight. And we're off to a perfect start. Missy's game sliding about 22, 23, 15, 16 at the arrows. You're going to see the break point, folks, roughly around 10, 11, 12 as the ladies start to migrate inward. Good reaction so far. And funny thing is, this is her B game, not even her A game. Maria also strikes and answers to continue perfection here in Louisville. 
talking to Maria in the interview, she asked her if she thought they were similar last week. She said they did, but used entirely different equipment. You can see for her 22 games this week, 215 average scores were very high. I think we did have one 300 in the field this week. As a matter of fact, we did. Hmm. Gonna think better of this one. Maybe distraction down by the audience, someone standing up or anything. Could be, that happened last week in East Hartford, she told us today, a couple of times a fan was moving a little bit. And that can be distracting. It can be. I think Maria's kind of staring her down, make sure. Yep, I'm ready to bowl. Came from that same side, too. <laughs> Definitely. Yeah, she's still looking. It's in her thought process, but she's got to focus on the 10 pins down late. Yep, I saw her, the woman. Good shot, Maria. Young lady off to the side playing with her cell phone. Any player rolls a 300 game during our telecast tonight will receive a $10,000 bonus courtesy of GoBowling.com. Visit GoBowling.com to find local bowling centers, get tips from the pros, and for all the best and the latest news on the information about your favorite sport, bowling. Oh, Tan back into the pit. Those pins have no chance again. Early perfection here, KK. Yeah, Missy's got a game. I mean, she gets so many lessons back in California. Five-step approach, holds the ball high, really drops the swing in very, very quickly. And again, this is her B game. She's trying to soften up her speed a little bit more. But what's so great about Missy's game is her angles are always in front of her. Great control of the pocket as well as making spare. She's an excellent spare shooter here on tour. She told us today, TV is the quickest game you'll ever bowl. She's trusting her process. All about focus for Missy. Looks for the front four. Yes. You bet. And how about this start today? So far, we're clean through seven. Perfect <laughs> bowling. Yeah, again, both ladies similar. 15, 16 at the arrows. You can see the pink finger grips, Missy's favorite color. You can tell by her outfit. Really good ball control. Ball just sets up and rolls through that 1 3 pocket as it splits the 8 9. Executive strike and spare here in Louisville. Dave Kelly, Shannon with you as we continue our live coverage of the PWBA Tour on CBS Sports Network. We're in Orlando next week, East Hartford last week, and Shannon won again her 11th tour title. Looking for the front four, it's staying perfect, wow! 60 feet to success, off and back again, shreds the rack. And look at the bowling to begin this match. Yeah, Dave Maria looks much more comfortable this week. Four-step approach, drops the ball into the swing really quick. I love her left arm, how nice and relaxed it is there. But again, the eyes and the head very, very still. Pushes off on the power step in step number three. And a deep knee bend slide. Has the hips a little bit open. That allows her to go more left to right. And her hand stays perfectly up the back of the ball. Creating Slides out of it left to right. Oh, I see her hand come way, way out of it. Swing was tucked slightly behind her back a little bit more. Tries to get around it. Fans it off to the right. Nine count was good. Common leave again for the women this week. Has the mark. And the spare keeps her clean, but now Missy has been perfect. Looks for the front five and take an 11 pin lead. Pulling in front of her entire family. Isn't here that something? Her mom Louisville, is Kentucky. from here in Louisville. Parents, in laws are here, aunts and uncles. Been here all week to watch her. And she said she loves it. It's not added pressure, it's added fun. Stop pushing. Looking to stay perfect. Yes. Late tap on the seven, down it goes. Front five. Yeah, you heard her stop. She's got it slightly inside. Really high on the head pin. Workman goes in front off the sidewall, kicks out the seven. Good shot, halfway through almost five frames, and she is perfect. She told us this morning, what better way to celebrate National Bowling Day than to be on TV exactly. and a chance to win it all. Thrilled 
It's her first full national telecast in eight years. She has one title to her credit so far. That might change today. Six right. Bringing 10 pin. Good job. Indeed it was. She starts up further on the approach. Again, trying to be softer with her ball speed. She's aiming right for 16, 17 at the hours. Watch as the six pin just quickly wraps itself around the 10. Ball deflects slightly, goes towards the nine. Common spare for the ladies again this week. Ringing 10 pin, a lot of stone eight pins we saw, seven pins. And yes, the dread at 7, 10 occasionally. Mark. Halfway home, match one here is from Louisville underway on CBS Sports Network. Live coverage of the PWBA Tour. Great match, Rodriguez and Parkin. World famous and historic Churchill Downs, home of the Kentucky Derby, open in 1875. It's about a mile from here, as is Cardinal Stadium in the Louisville campus. Halfway home here, Parkin Rodriguez, great match here. Kelly, as we look forward to the road to Richmond, culminating in another great season on the tour. Absolutely, David. And again, the X means the women automatically advance because they won a title. Missy Parkin and Maria Jose Rodriguez, 7 8th, most likely guaranteed. The list keeps changing frequently, though, as women continue to bowl well. Diana Zavialova, we saw her last week on the telecast. The lefty Shannon just outside the number. Verity Crawley also making a presence. But look at number 17, Birgit Purpler. So 16 players advanced, 2019 champions, and the point list as well. September 15th to the 18th, please tune in, come on out, and be there at Richmond Raceway. And the TV finals live on CBS Sports Network at 8 p.m. Eastern, September 18th. Tune in to your network and watch the best women bowlers in the world compete. A fantastic event. Always have great crowds in Richmond. Oh, fantastic the facility. defending champ of that event, Maria Jose Rodriguez of Columbia steps up here. Saw Stephanie Johnson's name a moment ago. Stephanie's keeping our official stats in the booth with us. Maria. Okay. 10 pins. And strikes in the sixth. And we've got ourselves a match here, Kelly. Yeah, Dave, both women on that 279 pace. Only one shy away, shot away from that perfection. Maria's just slightly deeper than Missy. The difference is, you watch the white thumb hole, that ball roll right there is a little bit more end over end, where Missy has a little bit more spinning motion from her ball, so the ball will retain more energy. Maria's ball rolls a bit more forward at the pins. It just comes down to a question of carry. Both women have great control of the pocket, their reaction, as well as their execution. Left lane to tie things up here. Not what she wanted this time. 2-8. 2-8 double wood. Unfortunately, when Maria's timing, you hear that heel stop. She gets just a touch late. Shoulder drops in. You can see the head go a little left. And the ball just misses a touch more down the lane to the right. Most of the break point's been further in. You can see it's about two or three boards outside of that zone. 44-foot pattern, you're going to want to see the ball break away towards the pocket, about 47 feet. Covers, avoids the chop, and a critical spare. For Rodriguez, looking for some great PWBA gear, visit the official online store of the PWBA at shoppwba.com. Hashtag Bowl Fearless, Kelly. <laughs> a lot of the fans were wearing the T-shirts and sweatshirts Saw this week. that. Cool. Bowling facility, sometimes warm, but also very cold. Great to warm up with one of those sweatshirts and T-shirts. Seventh for Missy, works on a spare and a 10-pin again. Light 10-pin this time, not so much a ringing one. Keeping things close. Difference is Marie, uh, Missy's back-to-back, -back, nine spare. She'll have the slight lead, but you can see the six-pin just falls lightly in front of the 10-pin. Has her 10, has her mark. As the story goes, she was a, a baby in the crib. <laughs> was fussing quite a bit, so mom put the crib close to the TV and bowling came on and she heard the pins and the ball and was quiet and content. <laughs> <laughs> but her parents did run a pro shop in Southern California. For me, it was the air conditioner. Yeah, <laughs> the yep. air conditioner kept that, me asleep through the entire summer. Whatever works summer. with the babies, whatever works. Been around the sport her whole life. Love to get a win here today in front of family and friends. All 10 back. 
For Missy Barkin tonight, 8 Eastern joins CBS Sports Network for the summer's hottest hoops league. Don't miss basketball's biggest legends, all-stars, and champions with a big three on the 24-hour home of CBS Sports. So Missy was a 10-time Team USA member. Her, will, she will be going to Women's World Championships just in two weeks down the road in Las Vegas alongside with Stephanie Johnson here in our booth representing Team USA. Good luck, guys. Good luck. Oh, Maria catches the shaker. Rolls the bucket with a seven pin. Call that little swishy, swishy strike. Only down by nine. Our eyes stay focused on the target. Falls off balance just slightly. Hips get a little bit open up wide. Close to that break point, light shaker off the sidewall. Six turns into 10, turns into a strike. Foundation frame. <laughs> Take a lead, you bet. Blast through that one three pocket. Off and back in the pit with power for Maria Jose Rodriguez of Colombia. Sliding about 25, 26, 17, 18 at the hours. A little more handsy on that one, meaning she got around the ball. A lot more rotation. Her reaction, she liked it a lot after coming up, I think, like that last time on that lane. Missy responds. Needs to get up the hill. And her ninth oh, avoids the dreaded 7-10 split, just the 10 pin again. That one leaked further right, 15. You can see it got to about 9, 10 down the lane, but about two or three feet later, caused the lateness in the break. Luckily, only the light 10. That could have been a lot worse. It could have been. Right. Covers it nicely. Step ladder bowling here in Louisville. Next up, Birgit Perpler from Germany. Second straight week she's been on TV. Did not go through the PTQ this week after last week's run in East Hartford. And Kelly, great run for you too. Sixth place, second straight week. Yeah, so if you count the Lucy third, so 666. Yeah. I have six, the six, devil six. in me, Dave. <laughs> Look out, folks, next week in Orlando. That's all I got to say. I can't wait to watch. Hoping 10 pin again. Again, real good control of the pocket, just slightly inward. A little bit firmer ball speed. Not much. It doesn't take much to make the ball change direction. You can see the ball just start to change up a little bit late. Yep, there's that wraparound 10. So close, so difficult one for 10 frames. You hit the pocket every shot, and your score doesn't reflect how great you fold. Lots of single pin spare conversion shots for Missy Parkin, particularly the 10 pin. One title, 2011 USBC Queens in Syracuse. So a major champion. Maria's won two majors in her career. We're in for a great finish. Bowl by Missy Parkin. 237 score. Hit the pocket every single shot. Week 10 a couple times, ring 10 a couple other frames. Maria still must stay clean though in this 10th frame. Nine spare strike. Required for the win. She told us today this is the moment she's waited for chance to close out an opponent on TV. She hasn't missed on this lane, Dave. Here's the moment. Strike. And a winner. 
Great form right here. Again, she hasn't missed yet on this right lane. Holds the balance. High, high flush shot. Trips the four pin off the sidewall. And Maria Jose Rodriguez will go on to visit Birgit Purpler in the next match. So ball change here, a little experimentation at the end now that this match is in hand. Always good to gain information and knowledge about Absolutely. the next ball, the next line change. Ring 10 for her there, good information to be taken away. Match one is complete, and Maria Jose Rodriguez Kelly is through. Yeah, she defeated Missy Parkin in this opening match, but coming up inside the window is Birgit Purpler from Germany. She's looking to win her title this year. Tune in, who's gonna win? Five seed Maria Jose Rodriguez of Colombia knocks off Missy Park in 248, 237 to climb the ladder here in Louisville tonight. Bowling is hard enough on the lanes, but sometimes it's the things off the lanes that make it even harder, as Josie Barnes tells us in this week's Bowl Fearless. The win that I got at the beginning of the year was definitely affected by my pregnancy. I didn't know what my health would be like towards the end of the season, so I thought it was really important to take advantage of the opportunity I had in front of me. Uh, as far as my physical health, I actually, this week, I felt really awesome. Uh, and, you know, the pins just didn't fall my way, but losing my mom tragically, and then just a few weeks later, also losing my grandfather. You know, bowling was something that actually connected me to both of them, so it did, uh, I guess give me some sort of norm that you know I, I really didn't exist in anything else when I first heard the news about my mom I had instantly made the decision that I wasn't gonna bowl but the more I thought about it and what she would want me to do I decided that this was kind of my way to feel normal again you know it happened right at the end of the US Open and Bowl Expo and having a few weeks in between when the tragedy happened and when we were actually back on tour gave me some time to really think about, uh, you know, what I wanted more than anything, but also, you know, what my mom would say to me at, at that moment. So it was just more of a mentality and, and, you know, committing to the idea that this is something that I really wanted to do and where I wanted to be right now. One of the things that my mom would say to me is just listen to my body and listen to my heart. Uh, you know, she wouldn't want me doing anything that would put my baby at jeopardy, uh, but if I was physically able, she would want me to go out and compete because that's what I love to do. We wish Josie and her family the very best. Great bowling still to come here from Louisville. Maria Jose Rodriguez, Birgit Purpler. All international match is next. That's and it's fantastic history and connection to America's pastime here. It's National Bowling Day. Bowling takes center stage and our second match. Maria Jose Rodriguez. Fresh off a win over Missy Parkin. Good Starts shot. us off a little high though and a very difficult leave. Four, six, seven. Four, six, seven. I don't think Maria was expecting that out of the commercial break. Again, the players coming off the previous match do not get to practice on the pair. Oncoming player does. 18 at the arrow, so definitely further left. You can see right around here, there's the gutter, 10, 11 at that breakpoint area. Medium volume, keep chasing it left. I say inward, right hand bowlers say left, keep chasing it inward. You need to find the get the ball to push down the lane. Interesting note Tate do um, as Birger gets ready. Second show in a row, Rocio Restrepo res, uh, represented the PWA at National Bowling Day. Here's Birgit, and tap on the 10, down it goes. Birgit style, five-step approach. The only thing I'm not crazy about her shot of this one, her head goes to the left, and when she does that, the shoulder closes down. 
usually has a tendency to miss inward. Wasn't a fan of that shot, but she tripped out the 10. She knew it. Yep. Side relief, 22 games and an average just under 218 for Birgit. Back-to-back -back weeks on TV. Much better shot. Left lane. 6-10. Starting to act up already on that left lane. Seems mm. like there's earlier friction in the mid lane section. There's the high 6-10. Sliding ooh, roughly about 26-27. Again, you can look. The break point's always going to be the same. 9-10-11, maybe migrate further in. 11-12. Almost like you're trying to get the ball to the three pin. Watch out. And a chop in the six stands, and it's an open early for Birgit. So she returns the favor after Maria had her open to begin the match. Let's go back to Shannon. Hey, guys, Maria stated that to start the show today, she noticed that the lanes, the front part of the lane, was holding up better than they had the entire rest of the week. So she actually started the show using a stronger asymmetrical cover bowling ball. Um, but as the front start to go, she's probably going to make a change to a stronger cover symmetrical ball. So stay tuned, see what she does. Thanks so much, Shannon. That's great. You know, the asymmetry means take a light bulb and just put like an extra piece to the bottom of it. That makes it asymmetric. The light bulb itself is symmetric, so it rolls even on both sides. So the stronger weight block in that asymmetric ball is going to make it want to pick up sooner and stand up even harder. Third for Maria. All 10 back. Great shot on that left lane. And up by 11 pins early. Yeah, I saw it said, Dave, I wanted to chase it left. So where they're sliding from the back of it, sliding about 27, 16, 17 at the arrows, gets a little bit further right. But Maria has a lot more access rotation. Her hand gets around it. She's able to get the ball recover harder in the back end portion of the lane. How will Beer get respond? Very well. For Germany, she told us today she grew up playing a little soccer, a little volleyball, but it was all about bowling. Her parents own a bowling center in Germany. And she just fell in love with the sport at a very early age. And unfortunately, they don't get the telecast back in Germany, and she's going to work on improving that so her family can tune in and watch her when she's bowling on national TV. And she spoke to her mom after losing in the final to Shannon last week in East Hartford. Her mom said, don't worry, I mean, the chalk held up. All the seeds we're supposed to win did, and Shannon was top seed. So just keep on keeping on, which keep she did rolling. to make the show this week, for sure. Ten pin. Fought ten again. One thing Birgit likes to do, she likes to be hard and firm with her ball speed. More direct, point A to point B. You can see the six pin again just lags and falls in front of the ten pin. So the ball starts to flex. I would say she needs a bit more shape so the ball rolls a bit more forward into the pins. Cross lane has the 10 pin as her spare. Follow the PWBA on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and on BowlTV.com to keep up with the greatest women bowlers in the world. Get the latest video highlights and news each week to follow your favorites. Women Highlight Fan Fest that just took place from 2 to 4 here at Executive Strike and Spare Lanes. Come Great next crowd, week yeah. to Orlando. Yeah, from 2 to 4. Bring your shoes. Bring your stuff. Come bowl with the best. Test out all the products from all the companies and have fun at Fan Fest. Well, it's quite a slip there and a light hit way off the mark. With the 1, 2, 4, 8 still standing. What happened, Kel? Some shoe issues right here. Gets the feet a little bit fast, slides a little too much, and starts to stick a little bit. When when the women start to get comfortable, when you're control of the pocket, you, you tend to get a little bit more aggressive because you feel like you can. And unfortunately, if you're too aggressive with her footwork and her tempo, just a bit off balance at the end, leaves the one, two, four, eight. Uh-oh, uh-oh. I thought for sure that was going to chase it left and, and leave the head pin standing by itself. Good conversion for Maria. Really nice cover. Maria 
Aquarius approaches four steps, crosses over, steps left, crosses back in front. Comes to a complete stop with that breaking heel. And again, she stops so much, her hips kind of open up a little much. So occasionally when she misses. Maria told us today she really wanted to take her time on TV. Felt rushed last week. Was looking at the shot clock. That was in her head a little bit. Yeah, the women have 25 seconds. And within that 25 second time clock, you just have to initiate your approach. You do not have to complete it. So if the clock tick ticks down, down to three, two, one, as long as you start your foot movement or the initiation of the push away, you are within legal limits of the delivery. Fresh 25 here for Birgit. Oh, high four pin for Birgit. Last time, light 10 pin, six pin fell in front, shapes it just like I said she needed to, and the four pin stands. Went from little angle to a too much angle. Ball shapes up really well, drives through, which goes left the pin deck. So from there, it's a two and one or three and one move off that leave. Birgit said it was that she really felt pretty good about her showing last week in East Hartford. There's a four pin. Shannon had that great run all the way to the title in East Hartford, Connecticut. That's part of the PWBA tour and our coverage on CBS Sports Network. We've got Orlando next week. A regional show will be doing there as well, leading us eventually to the final two majors of the year, September 8th in Raleigh, the Players' Championship, and then the road to Richmond later in September to wrap up the 2019 PWBA Tour season. Can't wait. Birgit, a close match. 7-10. Oh, goodness. Dreaded they 7 stand nearly impossible to convert. Yeah, and again, the ball is just coming up. When I say behind the head pin, watch here. It's going towards the six pin. And as it comes up behind the head pin, head pin comes off that side wall, tries to knock it out. Watch the head pin. Into the two pin four goes in front of the seven pin, doesn't take it out. And again, it's just because the ball is just slightly behind that head pin. So it's an open. We have a couple of those in this second match here in Louisville, but it's still close. Rodriguez, a 21 pin advantage. But as we've seen, anything can happen. We'll conclude match two next. The lady moving with the work. Rodriguez by 21 pins here, midway point. Of match number two, the number two seed, Dasha Kovalova, now joined by Shannon. Dasha, you have one TV to your credit, and you won. This is your second TV show ever, and your mom is here with you. What's it going to take to win title number two today? Just a lot of courage and, uh, you know, a little bit of luck. That's, that's what we all have, right? Thanks, Dasha. Back to you guys. Hey, Shannon, thanks so much. Dasha has a very sly sense of humor, and it came out a little bit there with that grin you could see. And even Quite a name. personality from yeah. Ukraine and, and the Queen's Champ this year. Yeah, she goes, I said, you remember the Queen's Champ? She's like, I, I, I think I, I don't even know I was there. <laughs> I, I, say, uh, I witnessed it. I saw it. You won it. Yeah, just a, a young innocence about her. Again, it's, it's, it's refreshing to see out here on tour. A very talented artist as well as we'll see. Absolutely. Just tremendous ability artistically. She is a grad of Wichita State, so one there in basically her hometown. She now lives in Wichita, so it was exciting for her. Maria steps up here in control. Second half match two is underway. 6-10. She's missing something. She's just, I don't know, doesn't seem confident, rushing to the foul line, trying to be firm with it. She said last night she was trying to throw it harder and harder as the lanes continue to break down. And I think, again, with only a few women on the TV show, she just has to keep chasing it left. Maybe this is where the ball chain, com chain comes in so the asymmetry doesn't stand up so hard. 6-10, complete. New addition to our PWBA and USBC family. Congratulations to Emil Williams, Jr. Aww. And my Shanice, Emil Williams the third. Trey was born this week. Happy, healthy, everyone is great. Mom and baby and new dad. Congratulations to the family. Wonderful blessing to be oh, to come great. into the PWA family.
And here we thought he was going to be on a plane last week. Made it home just in time. Well done. Seventh for Maria. All ten back. Much better shot on the left lane. What's the difference? Again, she got really fast with her feet on the right lane. Runs up to the foul line, but on the left side, just a little bit slower in the beginning, or I like to say calmer. Never to want to associate speed with those tempos in the feet. A little bit more calmer or softer in the beginning. More control with the upper body, better leverage. Ball was on line. 15 pound object, larger than the size of your hand. <laughs> Mechanics involved. Bowling is a sport. It is hard. Longtime member team Germany. Birgit steps up and strikes. Putting some pressure on Maria, who had trouble on that right lane. Not the case for Birgit. Yeah, last time up left the four pin. So I said a two and one move, three and one move, move left. That means three with her feet, one with her target inward. Comes with a clutch strike there for her in the seventh frame. And she said it was today, Cal. She really got a confidence boost for making the show in Connecticut last week. A lot of messages on her phone through social media, especially from Germany. She appreciated the German we were speaking, by the way. That's all you did. Yeah. I, I, pretzel and beer, that's all I know. She spielt noch einmal. She plays again. And knocks the ball down again. Catching fire late in match two to keep things very interesting. Birgit now sliding 30. 1920 at the arrow, so she's getting much deeper. Maria, who's actually a bit right of her, should get inside with her and stand on top of her, meaning in the same part of the lane, same line, same angle. But keep migrating inward. Medium volume, not a lot of hold. The only way you have hold is by creating a steeper angle through the front. See our win probability, 72 plus percent for Maria. How will she fare on the right lane? With Shannon a moment ago, she's the two seed. And a major champion. Whoa! Avoids the big four, but still the four, six, seven up and a tough split. That left lane is, is developing much more friction in the middle part of the lane. Look pretty good. All of a sudden, the end of the pattern in 44 feet, so about 47, 48. You see it start to check and roll forward early. Leaves the four, six, seven. Six dance. Tomorrow, 2 Eastern, it's high speeds and high intensity as some of the most talented sailors from around the nation compete in the Cows England Grand Prix. Don't miss Sail GP on CBS Sports Network. Early open and now a late one for Maria. And just like that, on the bench, down by six pins, but working on a strike for the lead here in the ninth is Birgit. Matches in her hands now. Ten pin. Slightly inside a target. Ball pushes an extra foot or two down the lane. Light ten pin again, flat ten. Sliding 29, 19 at the arrows. So again, more direct from point A to point B. It's going towards a six pin. It needs to be a little bit more towards a three pin on that angle entry. And the ball again behind the head pin pushes a bit too long. Six pin falls flat in front. Converts, no problem. Both ladies last week said there was a little bit more bounce from the right, so if you missed to the right of your target, ball still recovered. This week, because of the length of the pattern and the narrowness of it, you have to keep the ball more in front of you and just get to shape at the right point to carry 10 pins. 193 for Birgit, 200 for Maria. Max scores. We went from a 240 pace in the opening match now to a 190 pace. Good shot. 10 pin again. A common theme today. Yep. Birgit needs to make this just to have Maria show up in the 10th frame. Nasty 10 pin. I do. I've said this before, Dave. Sometimes I think there are 11 pins in the rack. Birgit might be thinking that right now. <laughs> Cross lane for the 10. We've seen yeah. flat 10. We've seen ringing 10s here in this match. 
So if she strikes here, she'll have a score of 182. That means Maria must mark in the 10th frame in order to advance to match number three against your incoming player, Dasha Kovalova. Just some pressure to apply Maria, another 10 pan instead. 181, again, 240 pace to 190 pace, but Maria still needs a mark. Anything less than that, nine open, split open, she will lose and Birgit will move on. So Maria must mark here in the 10th frame if she wants to advance to match number three. Needs a mark. Yep. Has a strike. Has a win. Maria Jose Rodriguez continues to climb the ladder as she'll knock off Birgit Perpler of Germany. And next up, Dasha Kovalova. 18 at the arrows, move further in on that right lane. Remember, in the first match, she didn't miss on the right lane. This match, she's had a little issues, not quite striking every single time with her footwork. Make a ball change, get some more information, see what happens as we go into match number three when we come back. This one is in the books. The five seed, Maria Jose Rodriguez has knocked off Missy Parkin and Birgit Perpler. And Dasha Kovalova, the second seed, is next up here in Louisville. All looking for the Pepsi PWBA Louisville Open Championship. Two matches complete from Louisville. The number two seed, Dasha Kovalova of Ukraine, awaits Maria Jose Rodriguez of Colombia climbing the ladder toward our top seed, Liz Johnson. Welcome back to Louisville, everyone. Our continuing coverage of the PWBA Tour on CBS Sports Network. Dave Ryan alongside Kelly Kulik. Hall of Famer joined as well by Shannon O'Keefe, who is the reigning Tour Player of the Year. Happy National Bowling Day, Kelly. To you, what does this great day mean to you in your life? It means everybody in the world is bowling at one point in their life. I started at the age of six, and look what happened. I kept with it, now I'm a professional. Some greatness, <laughs> <laughs> without question. Speaking of greatness, Liz Johnson is back on the show. It's her second TV appearance of the year, looking for her first title of 2019. It's a player who's an absolute legend, Hall of Famer. She's won 24 titles in her great career, three-time player of the year, but not a victor so far in 2019. What's happened to her? I don't know, Dave, could tonight be title number 25? Liz Johnson went home and she practiced, wanted to gain more leverage, get her legs underneath her, really trying to find some amenities to work with, taking collagen, icing herself, goes back during the break, sits on the bed while she eats her lunch. But let me tell you, she's here to stay. She had her legs underneath her all week long, led from wire to wire. She's got the right ball in her hands, and I've I don't know. I'm kind of predicting number 25 tonight, Dave. <laughs> Tough to beat. <laughs> Tough to beat. As the top seed for legend Liz Johnson. More bowling coming your way here in Louisville, Kentucky. Can't wait to watch our third match. Rodriguez, Kovalova, head to head. It's next on CBS Sports Network. And thanks to Jason Urquall as well. General Manager, Executive Strike and Spare. Jason Urquall here. Great staff, such fantastic hosts for the tour and all of us at CBS Sports Network. Yeah, we were here last year in Louisville. Not long ago, we were in Lexington when Jason was the manager there. So great bluegrass state welcomes us back. Such a cool location, too, right next to the airport, Churchill Downs, Louisville. Everything is, university is just right here. Yeah, big Cardinal fan. Yeah. You better be around here. Yes. <laughs> for sure. There's Maria with a good start on the left lane. Every match she started, she'll finish the match in the end. Strikes on the left lane after the struggle she had in match number two. From Ukraine, also has spent time in Russia. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome our number two seed from Ukraine, Dasha Kovalova. Mom moved closer. She was all the way in the back in the audience. Now she's closer up on her side. Mom Oksana is here. Moving her on in person. 
Dasha with a good start. Let's go back to Shannon. Hey guys, I just talked to Chuck, Dasha's ball rep, and he said she's extremely anxious, really nervous, and she never hit the pocket once in practice, um, and that they were gonna take a risk. She made a big zone jump left, and she's actually playing the left lane three and two more, and she's not sure if that's enough. So we'll see. Three and two more, Shannon. Wow, what a big difference. We saw Maria migrate in. So three more left with her feet, two more left with her target. Should be sliding a different spot, the foul line. See what it pans out. Ten straight back is what I see. Maybe nervous in warm-ups, but not now. Right, the lights are on for Dasha, the two seed, off to a great start. Five-step approach, really small. Well, big step with her heel toe. High backswing in the back. I really enjoy watching the ball comes off of Dasha hands. It's so clean every single time. Great rotation, good follow-through, and always, always holds her balance. Maria steps up, that knocks them all down. A nice tap on the 10 pin for the Tour Championship winner last year in Richmond. Also on the Queens in 2014. Not one but two majors to her credit. Competed in Peru at the Pan Am Games recently. And she was telling us today, Cal, she'd flow right to East Hartford for the event last week and then here to Louisville. Hasn't been home where she lives in Austin but can't wait to get back. <laughs> Maybe she's headed home tomorrow well, with a trophy. Me. Jet lag agrees with get her. The, the. Oh, Ten pin. Yeah, Maria for Team Colombia. Dasha may go for Ukraine and compete as an individual or in a doubles and trios event, possibly. There's that great four-step approach, that quick hand at the bottom of the swing. You can see the reflections of the pins, but the ball deflects slightly, leaves a ring 10. Watch it. Oh, miss that 10. I don't speak Spanish, but I know she wasn't happy with that result. Just the ladies, most time on C we see on TV, it's just the second shot is just as important as the first one. Take a bit more time, get set up in your in your routine, and give the same pin, the same amount of concentration you give when you're going for the strike. She was able to survive an open in her first match. Dasha would like to take advantage right here. 10 pin. See the ball just push a little bit further down the lane on the right lane. A little long before it wants to change direction and, and make that left turn towards the pocket. Starting about 28 with her left foot. Sliding 29, 17, 18 at the arrows. You can see the ball is tipping up. Just needs to start up a good foot sooner. There's a 10 pin, an art major at Wichita State. Dasha is very talented. This is some of her work that she creates in an iPad with a really cool program. The goal with these amazing looking characters is to be part of a graphic novel, which she would like to write and publish. And as we've seen with that amazing work, be the illustrator. Yeah, and the creativity comes at any time. She had her book out with her during the matches while we were waiting frames and so, so forth. And just jot down ideas. Maybe a little sketch or two. That's fantastic. Always working. So good. Pretty good shot. Six pin goes horizontal again. How many times have we seen the ringing ten here? Oh, I, I, can, I can't count on my hands and toes <laughs> how many times I left it. I'm sure Stephanie did, too. I watched her bowl right next to me this morning. And uh, again, just watch the six pin. Just goes around. Ball deflects slightly. Can get a little bit softer with your ball speed. Go a little bit more further left or inward. Just get the ball to shape up again. Long pattern. 13 to 13 is where it was oiled. Clean through four frames for Dasha. Bowling Not star slash superstar artist. Yeah. <laughs> That's impressive to me. What a great future for. A young star from Ukraine. Maria trying to respond. Right lane. Tap on the 10, down it goes. Our Bowl TV highlight of the week comes to us from our regional showdown finalists.
Julia Bond of Aurora, Illinois. Shot the only 300 game of this tournament. We talked about that count earlier. <laughs> Came the sixth game of the second round, helping her to a 25th place finish here in Louisville this week. Pretty cool moment. It was. I was right next to her. Um, I think Stephanie was close by. I'm not really sure yet. And uh, whew, 11th one was a little bit shaky, but the 12th one was buried. And she said, I asked her in the paddock. It just gave her some more confidence. Like, I'm meant to be out here. Big standing ovation last night in the building. That was pretty cool. Yeah, it's it's honestly, you know, 300 seem more common nowadays. But remember, we're bowling on sport conditions. They're not always as common out here as they seem to be. And it was nice to hear the crowd applause last night for such a, a difficult task and, and feat that she she came with that 300. But Maria gets the back-to-back -back jacks here for two in a row after that 10-pin miss on the left lane. So fifth frame. Gasha works on a spare up by one pin. <laughs> 10 pin again. If it was nine pin, no tap, it'd be a great event. Uh, Stephanie, are you charting that with your stats here? How many 10 pins Man, are left? Man, how many have we seen? Look right there, 18 at the arrows. 10 probably. Board 12. You always question yourself, what do you do, what do you do? And here's the funny part, if you try to make the ball strike, that's usually when things go, go badly. Just make a slight adjustment. One move left with your feet, get the ball to shape a little bit more. Try to knock out the 10-pin. Don't always have to be flush in the pocket to strike. All even. Look at the max scores. Wow. This could be a tremendous finish here in match three. Two seed against the five seed here in Louisville. And legend Liz Johnson looking for her 25th career title is next as the top seed. Six for Dasha. Seven pin. Oh, light seven. Ring 10, ring 10, ring 10. Again, to try to carry. Deeper on the left lane. She's already almost at fourth arrow, board 20. The ball is trying. You can see it's got, it's almost like it doesn't have enough treads in the tire. Not enough surface texture in the cover to, to get it to change direction. Exactly, Dave. Dig in and drive through that pocket like we, like we like to see. Shot critical here, cross lane. The seven has it, no problem there. Gosh, it takes a one pin lead halfway through. International final coming up here soon. Pepsi PWB and Louisville Open, 107. Tour events on CBS Sports Network this year. Aaron McCarthy won last year, a new champion in 2019. And Shannon O'Keefe is watching everything very closely. Shannon, what do you see here today? To start the TV show, we actually saw the lanes a little bit cleaner than we did the most of the week. It means the ball was getting down the lane a lot easier than, than before. So what I'm starting to see is I'm starting to see the front part of that lane start to go away, which was very true to how things happened this week. So it forces the players a little bit further left, and then carry becomes an issue. So I believe who's going to get through this match is who's going to be able to find the carry. Excellent information, Shannon. That's exactly what I saw all week long. All the other players did as well. Out on tour, it's, it's infamous for the fronts to go away. There's just so much friction built up by the amount of surface the women use on their equipment, the rotation as well, the laydown points, and it just takes it away from the front, makes it slightly tighter in the back. And like you said, who can carry all 10 pins will be the one that is victorious and the champion in the end. Good for three in a row for Maria. Let's see how it plays out here, guys. Maria strikes up 11. Getting down to her seventh frame. Looking for a four-bagger. 19, 18 at the arrows. That lighter board down there is board 10. She's right around board 11. Again, 44 feet. So the rule of 31 would state 44 minus 31 would be 13. Break point slightly right of that, 10, 11. So again, it's just a guideline, not an absolute. But it gives you a range, an area to look for. Here's a chance to go up by 21 pins. <laughs> Bigger. Bottom left lane. Guess what? It's a 10 pin. Yeah, no surprise, okay. Surprise, surprise. Yeah, Dave, and that left lane's hooking more, so this is where the asymmetry, where that bigger core, that extra weight on the side of the weight block, starts to slow down even more. She's already now 22, 
going left to right. You can see the white thumb hole on the ball as it stands up and starts to roll forward. When it starts to roll forward, it means it's expended all its energy. Ten pin is a common leaf. There's a ten, and a little sarcastic self-cheer there. <laughs> She missed the 10 earlier in the match and was so upset about it. And we saw a lot of her talking with her ball rep and some of the folks here on tour about that in the commercial break. Not easy to overcome an open frame, right? No, it isn't. And Maria is, again, very lighthearted. She has a tendency to maybe hit some things. <laughs> but she's OK. And back for Dasha Kovalova, her first title on tour, came to this year's 2019 USBC Queens in Wichita, where she lives, where she went to school. Former collegiate standout of the Shockers, I grabbed the lead at the halfway point of the title match over Sinley Jane of Malaysia, and held on for a 226-216 win. And the coveted Tiara, her first career title, is a major. Wow. It was amazing to watch and witness. What a rooting section she had in Wichita that night. Down here. by 10 here. Top match head to head with Rodriguez and leaves a four pin. Leave the 10, try to overcompensate, just maybe just try to rotate the ball a bit more, soften the speed. That one seems to be more in front of her on a direct path to the pocket. Watch the head pin into the two pin. Two pin wraps around the four pin, kicks out the seven. And lo and behold, one pin stands, and it's the four pin. There's the four pin. And there's the spare. The PWBA heads to Boardwalk Bowl in Orlando next week for the BowlerX.com PWBA Orlando Open. Catch all the action next week at 4 Eastern, not 5. Different start time. Be sure to mark that down on the TV home of the PWBA CBS Sports Network. That's just a hop, skip, and a jump for you, David. Easy one-hour drive from Melbourne. It's a, it's a home show. Very excited. Kel. Disney's Very excited. close by. It might be a 90-minute we'll drive. It's all the win probability. Right lane. That's crossing over. Oh, goodness. The 6-7-10 split. She was not expecting that. Catches it off her hand, gets it rolling forward earlier. See the thumb hole stand up even faster? Starts to roll forward, really hits high on that head pin. Gets it to about 10-11, but really up the back of it more, which means the ball is going to roll forward sooner. Cool, cool, cool. Oh, almost, almost. Hits the right of the six pin and it by itself. And just like that, down by five pins, heading into the foundation frame. The legend awaits. Top C trying for her first title. 2019, Liz Johnson, the Hall of Famer. Trying to join some elite company with 25 career titles. She's one game from that. First, so let's settle the business in our third match. What a finish coming up. Ten pin again. So close, so close. Sliding 30, 22. I hate to say I don't mean to sound stale, but it's just, again, a common leave. It was a, a built-in frustration for many of the ladies. You shoot 240, 230, all of a sudden 190 creeps in, 20 creeps in, because the 10 pin just stands. It's It was relatively simple to get to the pocket, but again, knocking down all 10 was challenging. 10 pin, 4 pin lead, but really pounding the 1 3. Maria's chased it a bit, some bad shots. Can Kasha catch a break? And she does. All 10 fall down for the strike in the ninth frame. Increases that score now, as you said, Dave. 226 max score, only 211 for Maria. Strike an eight. That's what is left here now for Dasha. To shut out Maria on the bench and take this win to face the top seed Liz Johnson next. Dasha has a strike on the left lane. And a little emotion there, Kelly. <laughs> 
from Kovalova, inching closer to the win. She's so sweet, she's so nice, but I really wouldn't want to get her upset because I <laughs> think she would come out swinging. Great shot by Dasha after going the four pin. Catches the break, head pin swishes out to the left. There's that commitment, there's that aggression. And that's what a strike looks like from Dasha's face. Ball 10. There's another one. And a win. And I did, you know, Dave, I crossed with Dasha, Dasha this last six games this morning. And when the lanes got harder towards the end, when they broke down, it's when her scores really started to elevate. 250, 270, 250. Bowled really, really well later in the block. She's going into the final match up against Hall of Famer Liz Johnson, one of the best young rookies out here on tour against the Hall of Famer. Exciting match to come up. Like last week, top two seeds will go head to head for a championship. Dasha Kovalova of Ukraine, the former star at Wichita State with her shocker colors has knocked off Maria Jose Rodriguez of Colombia. And now Liz Johnson awaits. The title match from Louisville is on the way. Final score, Maria Jose Rodriguez, 198. Dasha Kovalova, 226 in match number three. Liz Johnson, Hall of Famer, looking for her first title of the 2019 season. And title number 25. Look at our PWA all-time career title leaders. How about that list? Costello and Tish Johnson, 25 each. And a chance for a tie for fourth all-time for the great Liz Johnson. Yep. So meeting today here in 2019, the legend and the young star. And they met as well the World Championships in Vegas in 2009 as well. Dasha was 14 <laughs> years old competing for Ukraine. They'll meet again here in Louisville next. Four-year-old young star Dasha Kovalova of Ukraine, one career title, is about to take on the 45-year-old legend. And Liz Johnson has won 24 times. Our BPA moment of the match, Kelly, 10th frame. First strike needed it, Dasha got it, and knocked off Maria Jose Rodriguez. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome our number one seed from Palatine, Illinois, Liz Johnson. On the verge of even more history. It's amazing, Liz, number one seed. She's going to finish the match, and she thrives in pressure situations. Watched many, many of times her needing to double in order to win a title, and stepped up every single moment to do so. As you talked about. Early in the show, Kelly, she's overcome some knee problems this year. Has not been 100%. Feels great now. Back on TV, Liz Johnson strikes and a good start. Yeah, the left knee has arthritis. The right knee has a slight meniscus tear now. So you see it taping up. Many of the ladies out here on tour taping up arms, fingers, hands, knees, everything possible in order to withstand the amount of bowling that we do in the short period of time we do it in. She's been in pain. For the last six to eight months, she told us today. Not easy for Liz. Here's the youngster. The two seed, Dasha. With a tap on the 10, down it goes. Second ever TV appearance. And it's against Liz Johnson for the championship. You saw she won the Queens in Wichita. And she can answer the bell. She can, Dave. Board 18 at the arrows. Six pin kicks out the 10. I don't think she really knows she's bowling Liz Johnson. She's really just focused on what's in front of her. One shot warrior bowling against the pins. That's what her job is right now. She did say to us today, sure it's intimidating if you're facing Liz because it's Liz. Well, here we go. How will the youngster respond? Looks for back to back Jack. She's throwing the match. She's got it. Yeah, I think she's calmed down or tamed down her ball speed just a little bit. So the ball picks up and rolls in the pocket to split the 8-9. 
Let's go back to Shannon. More on Liz Johnson. Hey, guys, Liz is throwing a ball that she actually hasn't thrown this entire week. It's a cleaner, asymmetrical bowling ball. It's allowing her to stay left of the early friction, but it's giving her the confidence that it's going to come off the spot when she gets a little further right. And Shannon, she says that she's using the same ball throughout the entire tournament. First time she's done that on tour since 1997. That's amazing. That's a high shot and leaves the 3-6. One ball, one tournament, Kelly. Yeah, Dave, she was to the left of me the entire time. She threw uh, a, a really aggressive symmetric bowling ball all week long. It's When you can do that, that's just unbelievable. Comes up high there, but she also drilled a ball for the show. Says anything happens on TV. Goes for the 3-6 bear here. My conclusion of why is just the lanes are playing slightly different. So the early friction goes left with a stronger ball, wants the ball to read the mid lane and just tip up enough in the back. Battling ball reaction and knee problems. That's been the story of the 2019 season for Liz Johnson, but all that's behind her now. We asked her today, what's the percentage of health? How are you feeling? She said about 89.99999%. <laughs> Close to 90, but not 100. But it's the best she's felt in a long time. And there's a direct connection with her being on TV here today. Oh. Top seed, third frame. Watch it. Two, four, five, seven. Based on now, I'm not really crazy about her ball reaction from what I'm seeing. The ball's going too long. She squared up to it, hooks too much. So she might have to go back to that one ball. 1920, many times we see Liz on TV and she's always playing further to the right. Yes, she can do that, but she also can play deep inside angles. Keeps them in front of her, uses loft to get the ball, to tip up and roll forward. She does a very good job of carrying the pins. Lots of cover, takes out the seven late. And a spare keeps her clean. Any player rolls a 300 game during our telecast today will receive a $10,000 bonus courtesy of GoBowling.com. Visit GoBowling.com to find local bowling centers, get tips from the pros, and for all the latest news and information about your favorite sport, bowling. Dasha looks for three straight. It's a good start. Catches the turkey in the first three frames. Tasha's game is unique too because she goes upward with the ball. In today's modern game, we see the push away or the drop in, drop in sooner. But she really goes up with the ball. She's able to do it the same way every single shot. And again, creates good ball speed, good momentum, great leverage, and a clean release when she lets go of the ball. Five for eight on the left lane and five for seven on the right lane. First three in the championship match though. Looking for the front four. You bet. Oh, 10 back again. Those pins had no chance against Dasha Kovalova, who now has a big 34 pin lead on the legend. Liz Johnson, my question. Yep, I see the ball change coming up. She didn't like her reaction. After the last two, four, five, seven, she's going to the symmetrical bowling ball. Going with her gut. If anyone knows her gut the best, it's Liz Johnson. Fourth frame works on a spare. That's a high shot, and that is a split. Six, seven, ten. Now, she said she'd been trying to gain more leverage in her lower body and her legs, trying to stay down longer. We practiced together. New good knee been there. Just misses way inside of her target. When she's trying to, when the lanes got drier, she really picked up her ball speed. Almost. And when you try to increase your ball speed, it's easy for the arm swing or the shoulder to tug down, the hand close down, and miss inside your target. So down by 49 pins already in four frames. Wow. Strike, spare, spare, open. Best finish this year was in Lincoln. That was third place. Trying for her first title of 2019. She told us another amazing fact today, Kel, that since the tour came back in 2015, not a match play, but a total pin event with qualifying leading to the show. It's the first time she's been the top seed. Really? It's hard to believe. Wow, that is way off target. I hate to say it, and I hate to use another sport analogy, but she's fishing right now. Not really sure. A little over-under, too much hook, not enough hook. 
the two shots on the right lane were poor execution. 18, that was good off her hand. You see the ball trying to change direction. Just not enough. I think she needs a bit more surface. 1 2 10, lots of cover here and doesn't do it. So back to back opens and wow, look at the lead here for Dasha on the bench at 61 pins. And unfortunately, the legend has seen her game go off the rails in this championship match. A shocking development. And the two seed is sitting pretty here. Wow, what a position to be in. Looks for the front five to go up by 71. Dasha trying to take control. We'll do it with another strike. The nickel. And look at this lead. 71 pins on Liz Johnson. Yeah, and as good as Liz scored all the way through qualifying and then the, the last six games today, Dasha's rotation, because it has a higher axis rotation, so picture your tire staring you straight in the face going, right to left counterclockwise it's able to push the ball down the lane a lot longer retaining more energy so when it releases that energy it still has a lot of power and energy left to explode in that one three pocket dave how about the front six in an 81 pin lead yes! Seven down lane. that's another strike for dasha Way home to perfection. Great shot right here, sliding about 33, 20 at the arrows. Still finding that heavy blue, uh, that picture of that oil pattern, but looked a little trip there at the end. Head pin bounces off the sidewall, four pin off, something comes back over, gives a little love tap. <laughs> Liz Johnson finds the pocket for the swisher strike. After leaving the split last time on that right lane, catches her first strike, second strike of her championship match. Still down by 81 pins. She told us today, Kel, at 45 years old, a lot of years left on tour. She feels like her game is still at its peak. Yes, the injuries have been tough, but she plans on staying out on tour a long time. This will probably not be one she'll remember with their inability to find that one three pocket. Yeah, reminiscing it's history a, a little bit. Though. Yeah, when I, when I went on tour in 2001, Liz had some, some back issues in her 20s. And uh, she said now at the age of what she's at, she's, she's feeling the best physically overall. Of course, the ailments with her knees, but her uh, 30s and 40s were much better than her 20s. This has just been a disaster for Liz Johnson. No other way to put it. No, Down by 93 pins, and unfortunately, <laughs> Fan is not going to get a chance to celebrate too much, but Oksana, who is there, that is Dasha's mom. First time she's ever watched her bowl on TV today, coming all the way from Ukraine to watch, and she has just been outstanding. Looks for the front seven here to stay perfect. Yes, another tap on the seven pin, and down it goes. Wow, seven strikes in a row. And again, Dave, building on the last match against um, was Rodriguez. She's controlled the pocket every single time. She's maintaining her leverage. Her balance is solid. She's hitting the one three. She's doing everything she's supposed to do, and that's execute. And you do that, and you have a better chance of carrying, catching the brakes, tripping the seven every single time. Front seven here for Dasha Kovalova. And that is pin not lead. a misprint. 103 pin lead. Incredible. Looks for another one. Front eight. Yes! Eight down, four to go for a 300 game and a $10,000 bonus. How about Dasha? Sliding 33, 19 at the arrows. Again, look at the pin on the ball. Just picks up six pin, gives the love tap to the 10 pin for the front eight. Liz just needs to find some rhythm. Just so. And there's a strike. And so a strike there. She's having fun with the crowd here. Good for her to take this pretty well. That was pure. Thank you for that sign. Good off her hand. Let's see if she can catch this left lane now. 
Very few Boeing fans would have said she'd be down by triple-digit pins in a championship match. Liz Johnson, never. Yeah, it's, it's incredible. Sometimes it's always challenging coming off after being on the sidelines and watching your opponents. Packs the double right there, though. Four strikes for her. She can still shoot. 187. But Dasha Kovalova now, Dave. Eight strikes in a row, building up to the ninth frame, looking for the train of nine strikes How in a row. How about this? Front eight down, Kel. Now number nine. How about Dasha? Yes! Nine up, nine down. Nineteen at the arrows. Again, direct line to the three pin. All week long, once you got further left, you just the ball reps would say, hey, point it towards the three pin. Get it towards the three pin. Let it face up enough. Ring ten pins last game, Dave. Not one stands. Let's keep the momentum rolling. Can she get 10 in a row? Four pin, little hand signals over. Do I want one and one? Ten straight strikes in a row. She's got the win at hand. How about a 300? How about a second title this season? $10,000 bonus if she shoots it. Looking for number 11 in a row. Tasha Kovalova has got 11 straight. Bowling by the young star from Ukraine. Dave, if she shoots 300, she's buying dinner. That's all I got to say. Look at the focus, look at the eyes. One strike away from perfection. Her second career tour title, $10,000 bonus. A lot riding on this shot. Oksana, her mom, can barely watch. For a 300 game, Kovalova does it! It's a 300 for Dasha Kovalova! And she wins the Pepsi PWBA Global Open at the same time! Incredible bowling history today from Louisville, Kentucky! Tremendous week for legend Liz Johnson. Shannon O'Keefe is set to speak with Dosh in a moment. Fourth ever televised game in PWBA Tour history. And Liz How Johnson was one that? of them. Liz, Liz was, one, was of them. one of them. Michelle Feldman, Cara Honeychurch, and now Dasha Kovalova. 300 perfection, 12 strikes in a row. Unbelievable. It's the first time Oksana has ever seen her bowl on TV in person to sit on a show, and it's a 300 game for a tour title to beat Liz Johnson. Okay. I mean, you can't script that, Kelly. Dave, that last With shot. With the 12. best Hollywood writers. Exactly. She had a couple swishy light love taps on the seven. She packed 10 pins straight back into the pocket. Mom likes it. Oh. Dasha likes it. Chuck Gardner's wife, Deb, likes it. And this audience was on their feet. In a moment, we'll hear from the happy champion. Dasha Kovalova has made women's bowling history on National Bowling Day. It's just perfect. Post-match interview is next. Great to be in Derby City, Louisville, Kentucky. 
And moments ago, Dasha Kovalova, the number two seed from Ukraine, a perfect 300 game, knocking off legend Liz Johnson for her second career PWBA Tour title. She's joined now by Shannon. Dasha, wow, 300 to win your second title, absolutely incredible. Who would you like to thank? I'd like to thank Pepsi and Executive Strike and Spare, along with all our national tour partners, as well as Brunswick, Vice, Chameleon, Jersey, Sportswear, and Genesis Tape for helping my arm hold up. <laughs> so your mom was here in the audience with you. This is the first time she's able to watch you live, and you pulled 300. So how does it feel to have your mom here with you? I think she's dying. <laughs> I hope mom's okay. Dasha, amazing. We're gonna bring in uh, Courtney Moody to present the trophy for Dasha from Pepsi. On behalf of Pepsi, congratulations, Thank Dasha. You. I did it, I did it again. <laughs> So you, in, on an incredible run this year, what has been your keys to success year? Uh, the shoes that are half size too small. Because <laughs> last tournament I had the shoes that are half size too small and I couldn't walk and now I can. <laughs> okay, so new shoes it is. All right, well, awesome job. We're so proud of you. Congratulations on your 300. Thank you. All right, Jenna, thanks so much. Josh had the right shoes, felt healthy. And how about this, as the two seed, a 300 game to beat Liz Johnson to win a title. More from Louisville next.